Hey everyone, welcome to Liftoff, the channel where we provide SpaceX news and updates and also update you on important developments in the space race. In this episode, we have updates about SpaceX future and the problems it might cause to Russia's space program. But before we move on to the updates, please subscribe to our channel. If you enjoy your time with us, please like us and share. SpaceX needs a lot of money. Billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk said on Tuesday that his Starlink satellite's internet venture was growing quickly as he forecast total investment cost in the business at between 20 billion and 30 billion. Without disclosing details, he also said Starlink has two quite significant partnerships with major country telecos. That could help the SpaceX division plug gaps in fifth-generation mobile and cellular networks. The Tesla Inc. CEO and founder of SpaceX said investments caused before Starlink achieves fully positive cash flow would be from 5 to 10 billion. It's a lot, basically, Musk said in the video interview from California with the Mobile World Congress. The telecoms industry's largest annual gathering, which is being held in Barcelona. Starlink and RI of low-orbit satellites offering high-speed low-latency connectivity is already offering a trial service and aims to cover the world, except for the North and South Poles, starting in August, Musk said. It has more than 1,500 satellites aloft and is operating in about a dozen countries, adding more every month. Musk forecasts a total customer's number would reach a half million over the next 12 months, from the 69,000 now. Some analysts question whether satellite internet can be a viable business model because it mainly targets remote areas, where there may not be enough people able to pay the high traffic needed to recap the investment cost. Starlink would need a few million subscribers, paying about $99 a month, each to recap a $5 billion investment in a year, said analysis Tim Ferrer, president of TMF Associates. A $30 billion investment over a decade would not require a dramatic rise in subscribers, but to achieve Musk 2020 projection of roughly $30 billion revenue a year would require tens of millions of subscribers, he said. It is not implausible to get this number, a few million, to take the system not going bankrupt. But this is not enough to justify the valuation of SpaceX, he said. The more Elon Musk talks about he's going to invest tens of billions, the harder it becomes for other people. That's the big part of Musk's objective, to limit competition. Starling faces competition from Amazon.com, subsidiary Cooper OneWeb, Paolo Pescatore, an analyst at PP Foresight said Starlink needed scale which would lower cost, hence the needed to partner with telecos. Musk said he was talking to possible partners as a number of countries require operators to provide ruler coverage as conditions of their 5G license. He also said if telecom operators have cellular station in remote regions, they could use Starlink to allow them to connect to core networks. The rapid spread of wireless and terrestrial broadbands, along with high prices, were significant factors in killing previously low-Earth orbit satellite ventures. Starlink is selling terminals for half price, Musk said, adding he expects to bring down terminal costs from over $1,000 to $30 or $50 in next 12 months. SpaceX Obstructing Russia's Plans Russia's Progress 78 cargo ship, which launched over the International Space Station on Tuesday, June 29, will get dangerously close to one of the SpaceX Starlink satellites and Falcon 9 rocket fragments, according to the statement from the Russian space agency Roscosmos. The Progress spacecraft, which carries about 1,633 kilograms of cargo, including food, fuel, and other supplies to the orbital outpost. Launched from Roscosmos Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan at 7.27 p.m. on Tuesday, 
Progress 78 will approach the two objects about three and a half hours before its docking at the International Space Station. The close approach, which triggered the potential collision alert, was detected by Roscosmos Main Information and Analytical Center of the Automated System for Warning and Hazardous Situations in Near-Earth Space, Roscosmos said in a statement issued on the Space Agency website Wednesday. Based on preliminary calculations, the Starlink 1691 satellite will be just 0.9 miles away from the Progress 78 on Thursday at 5.32 p.m. Three minutes later, a fragment of a Falcon 9 rocket booster left in orbit in 2020 is expected to approach the spaceship within 0.3 miles. The Roscosmos press office said that the ground control teams are continuing to monitor the situation but can provide any further details. Space debris expert Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for the Astrophysics, said the situation was by no means surprising. There's a lot more stuff in that, just below the ISS, altitude regime, that there used to be thanks to the Starlink, McDowell said, adding he could not independently confirm the close approach, as Progress 78 is expected to carry out the last one-orbit adjustment before the predicted encounter. Starlink 1961, which launched in September 2020, was lowered out of the operational orbit at 340 miles in April, McDowell said, and is apparently on its way to the Earth's atmosphere to burn up. It takes them several months to lower the orbit from 550 kilometers to re-entry, McDonald said. The Falcon 9 launch vehicle Debris, I suspect, is one of the four Starlink tension rods jettisoned from the V1.0 L9 mission in August 2020. That launch used a higher parking orbital than usual, so the rods did not re-enter quickly as they do on most Starlink launches. The growing number of satellites, spent rocket stages and pieces of space debris, which only multiply as orbiting objects collide and break apart over time, has been causing concern in the international space community for some time. On May 12, roboticists at a Canadian space agency spotted a small hole in the terminal blanket of the space station's robotic arm. The functioning of the arm, which has been helping astronauts to serve the station and manipulate large equipment since 2001, was not affected by the strike. According to NASA, the International Space Station performs maneuvers to avoid space debris every year. In 2013, Canadian astronaut Chris Hadflat tweeted about a bullet hole discovered in one of the station's solar panels, which was caused either by micrometeorite or piece of debris. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. Please like us and hit the subscribe button so we can notify you when the next episode is available. Until next time, it's bye for now from all of us at Liftoff.